Hello! This video is a demo for assignment 2.5. That is your group progression sheet where you did one progression in class and you choose another for homework. I am going to demo progression number one. So unless you did that with your group in class, number one is off limits to you. Uh, first I'm going to show you the completed assignment and then I'll pause it, erase it, and recreate what I've done. A couple of things to notice here. Um, even though I uh, tell you not to continue the first progression beyond the first system, your progression can span multiple systems. I'm just going to, I just want to make sure that you don't run out of bars when you uh, start the second progression. That's why I ask you to add bars in the middle. Um, you can see my progression's a little bit cramped here. You can deal with that in a number of ways. First of all, I can take this chord symbol and use the arrow keys to move it up or down uh, just to get it out of the way. I can also create line breaks for my systems just by choosing a measure and hitting the enter key. It'll make it the last measure of a line. And the other thing I can do, the other thing I can do is go up to the view menu and choose document layout and you'll get a box that looks like this. And I can change the note size just a tiny bit from six points to five points, and you'll see that uh, kind of puts everything a little smaller and a little closer together. So I'm going to pause now and I'll erase what I have and then show you how I created it. Okay, uh, the first thing you'll see is I have my chords on the scratch staff above. That is completely optional for you. If you've already done that in pencil, you do not need to recreate it here. Um, and in fact, it will unclutter your score if you don't use it. Um, here are the chords I've chosen. Just a 1, 5, 4, 3, 1 to uh, expand the tonic in the first measure. Here's my 4, and then I have to have a uh, 7, 7, a 5. So I put that after the 4 because it's a chromatic predominant. I proceeded to 5, and then 1, 5, 6, 5, 1 with a do, t, do in the bass. And then my 7, fully diminished 7, a 5 again respell here for A major, and it, it's spelling in A major uh, demands that we need, we need to pick a, a new root. So here's our C sharp, which is the new root. C sharp, E, G, and B flat is our chord. C sharp is going to lead to D, and that's why it's a, five, a 7, 6, 5, a 4, and I've made a misprint here, so I'm going to fix it. There we go, 7 diminished 6, 5, a 4. Um, again, C sharp is the new root, C sharp, E, G, B flat is the new chord, um, E is the new bass note, and that's why it's in 6-5 position. Continuing, uh, I'm going to resolve this for, to 4-6, and I'll talk about why I chose that chord a little bit later, to a minor 4, cadential 6-4, 5, and then my 1-5-6-5-1 worked great before, so I'm going to use it again, a German 6th in A major, respells as a 5-7 in B flat major. So F A C D sharp becomes F A C E flat. I'm going to resolve that to 1. I'm going to do a 1, 5, 4, 3, 1, 6, just like I did in the beginning. Oops, and it looks like I'm missing a 7th there, so I'm going to add it. E flat should be in that chord. Um, and then to finish it out, a Neapolitan 5-1. I'm not going to play this uh, because I get feedback on the videos if I play from Note Flight. Uh, what I will do is put a link to the score inside the uh, comments on YouTube so you can have a look at it and you can play it. One more thing, um, you don't have to write your pivot chord twice. I've done it here so that you can see the two different spellings and down here so that you can see the two different spellings. You only have to write it once. Now, having said that, you can write it twice if it helps you uh, work it out. You'll just hear it for longer when you play it back. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is write my bass line. Since this is keyboard style, all that you have in your left hand is the bass line. It's a single line, so I'm going to show you that. So my bass line, do, re, mi, fa, fi, so, do, ti, do, fi, and Fi becomes the new Re, uh, excuse me, the new Sol, because we're going to A major. So La, Fa, So, So, Do, Ti, Do, Le. Le becomes the new Sol in B flat major. 
do, re, mi, fa, so, do. Now I'm going to show you one measure at a time, how I did this in keyboard style. First of all, you'll notice that we start with a bass line that ascends. Um, since you want to keep contrary motion between your hands, that means the right hand is going to move downward, and that means you should start it kind of high. I started with um, I started with D in the soprano, okay, and um, I could also have started with F in the soprano. That would work too, because this is not being sung by voices. You don't have to worry as much about the range. The important thing with keyboard style, first of all. Try to maintain as much contrary motion as you can in the outer voices. Also, resolve things. Here's the seventh of the 5 7 chord. It's got to go fa to me, especially if it's in an outer voice. And where you can, try not to move both hands in the same direction. Um, and then also remember that if you're playing this on the piano, you won't, won't want your hand to move very much. Um, so notice that I go mi, fa, mi on the top, do, ti, do in the middle. The hand's not moving much at all. Uh, I actually have a friend who calls this maximum sloth. Be as lazy as you can. So that's my first measure. Here's my second measure. And oops, I made another mistake here. Pardon me. I'm not going to reshoot the video. I'll just fix it. This four is actually a two six. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> so, uh, notice that I chose the 2-6 instead of a 4 so that I could use me to re to do in my right hand, and that works really nicely. 2-6 and 4 are both uh, diatonic predominants. Either one will work. Um, but I got that vo nice voice leading and contrary motion in my outer voices. All right. 7, 7 of 5, moving to 5. My bass, of course, is going to go fi so because the leading tone needs to resolve. Here, the 7th of the chord, and you'll see on the scratch staff, there it is, the 7th needs to resolve down, and it does here in this bottom voice of my right hand, uh, me to re. In general, your fully diminished 7th chords, especially if they're in root position, they should kind of collapse inward like this one does because this, the root is going to resolve up and the 7th is going to resolve down. Then remember that our good old five chord has a T in it. That T will need to resolve to DO, so that should be in your top voice. That also gives us contrary motion. And I could have gone up to RE, but I did a little leap to FA. That's okay, it's not too big of a leap, and that also mimics the beginning. Uh, another thing is that it's nice to have in a, a 5-7 chord in, inversion, it's nice to have a diminished fifth on the outside, so you get fa to mi and t to do happening at the same time. That's really a cool sound. All right, our pivot chord. Again, you only have to write this once. I wrote it twice so that you can see how it works. Um, do to fi, mi to me. All right, and this would collapse inward, made a re and fee to so, if it weren't going to another key. As it is, we're going to a new key. This D flat functions as C sharp. This is the leading tone to four. So our next uh, chord is uh, going to have D in the soprano voice. All right, B flat is now the seventh, so it's still going to resolve down to A. Um, so our next measure looks like this. By the way, the reason that I chose a 4-6 here was because to go to a root position 4, um, it would give me not, not evil parallel fifths, but E to D and B flat to A in this middle voice, that would be a diminished fifth to a perfect fifth. That's not illegal, but it doesn't sound very good. Um, so to solve that, instead of taking my new um, so to fa, I took it to la and went to a 4-6. And then I fixed that over here by going to a root position minor 4 and slip in a chromatic chord there. And the next couple of measures are pretty straightforward. Um, I have my cadential 6-4, uh, and that should resolve the 6th to the 5th, the 4th to the 3rd above the bass. Um, and then my 5 chord resolves as closely as it can. 
And here I have the 15651 again with Do Ti Do in the bass and Mi Fa Mi in the soprano. And then our German sixth in A major, which becomes our pivot chord. Um, I chose Mi to May here, even though that's going in the same direction as the bass, it doesn't really create a problem with parallels. Um, Mi Fi, I think sounds a little funny. Uh, you could have gone there. I, I think this works a little better. And 5-7, uh, now that we're going to resolve this as a 5-7 in B flat major, we need to make sure we take the leading tone, T to Do, and then the alto voice, excuse me, the tenor voice, Fa to me. Um, and so I can do that just by resolving all the notes downward to the closest place. All right. Um, I want to point out the voicing of my 1 6 chord here. Um, oh, and look, that E flat is missing again. Let's fix that. There we go. I, uh, I don't take the, the C in the bottom voice of the right hand up to a D because that would create parallel octaves in an inner voice. Instead, I have this voice exchange happening, Do, Re, Mi in the bass, Mi, Re, Do in the alto. All right, and that leaves us with our Neapolitan to 5 to 1. Remember that the Neapolitan, uh, in particular if you have Ra in an outer voice, uh, to go a diminished second is not only okay, but it's typical. So we have Ra to T to Do. Uh, excuse me, I meant to say a diminished third. To move a diminished third from C flat to A is just fine. It's, it's like we're making half steps on either side of the tonic. Um, if you have any questions about this assignment, please put the questions in the comments section of the video. I will also post a link in the comments. Thanks for watching. Bye.